Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the shop. Last Saturday, I did a video on miter folding and why I prefer to do miter folding on um, plywood and just material in general that I know I can make flat and straight. And I talked a little bit about how I'll use a track saw to do that and whatnot, but I didn't really have much footage, uh, if really any footage of actually doing the miter folding. And today, I've got some beams to make. They're gonna be 12 foot long. So I thought I'd do a video kind of showing in practice how you can use a miter fold and some of the things you've got to watch out for um, that can make everything go bad. Now your biggest enemy whenever you're miter folding is gonna be if your material is not straight. Because if you rip that bevel on your board and the material's not straight, it's, the tape is not gonna work right. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm, this board's not very straight. I've got the crown like this. I'm gonna chalk a line and I'm gonna use my track saw to, to put a straight rip on that. And I'll show you in a little bit why that's really important. In this video, I'm just gonna miter fold four beams, but the first thing I need to do is get the bottom part of the beam, which will have a bevel on both sides. So what I did here first was I made a long rip with the track saw, which gave me a straight edge. Most of these boards had at least a quarter inch, if not three eighths of an inch crown in the board. So getting, through, getting rid of that crown and giving me a straight edge is the first step in success whenever you're gonna miter fold with tape. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run these through the table saw over here and rip them to what I need. I've said before, what I like to do on my long rips whenever I have long miters is to rip them at 45 and a half degrees. Somebody recently asked me how I set up my table saw at 45 and a half degrees quickly and consistently. I always keep a digital gauge in the drawer right beside my table saw. So first thing you're gonna do is raise your blade all the way up, turn on your digital gauge, put it on its side so that the magnets are facing the blade. So the next thing we're gonna do is see if that is at zero. And it is, if it's not at zero, hit the zero button so that it re-zeroes it. So you're at zero. I don't know if you can see this or not. Just a second. That's 0 0.1, so I'm gonna hit the zero button again. Now it's 0, 0.0. Now simply slide it over onto your blade and that magnet will catch your blade. Oh boy, there went the camera. All right, I think we're back in business now. So what I'm gonna do is crank the blade all the way over. And I'm going to adjust it until I'm right at 45 and a half. There's a little bit of lag on it. All right, right there's where I want to be. I'll just pop this off, turn it off. We're good to go to make our rips. I'll also be using these um, Jessam stock guides. They have some spring, helps keep the material pushed down, and it pulls the material into the fence with these wheels because the wheels are canted inwards, so it actually pulls the material and keeps it tight to the fence as it goes through. Helps on long, long rips like this.
what we've got now is four boards bevel on both sides one side was done with the track saw the other side is done with the table saw so the track saw side ensured it was perfectly straight the table saw part of the operation ensured that i had a consistent width now one thing i did that is kind of an interesting note i specifically made the width for the bottom of this beam seven inches and the reason for that is the inside of the beam then will be five and a half so it'll be easy to use framing material or even a, a poplar one by six throw that on the ceiling and that can be my interior blocking and i don't have to worry about an additional step of ripping framing material to a particular width and that's what you would have to do if you left this board at seven and a quarter or some odd width now just to show you the method of the madness here a little bit these two boards are what we just did on the table saw this board here i just picked up off of my pile of lumber and it's got a nice size crown on it you'll notice that since i straight line both of these boards we've got a nice straight edge on these miters and they're going to go together really well now this board has a 3 8 inch crown on it so you can see if i would have tried to tape this with that 3 8 crown on it it's never going to work and that's why whenever you're miter folding it's really key to have straight edges next step we've got the four bottom pieces that means i've got eight side pieces i'm going to rip a straight edge now so i'm going to put crown out and i'm going to use my chinois chalk line here i got i want to show you guys this the end on this chalk line is a point so it works great for this type of thing because you can just stick it in the end of the material pull it out and then snap it you can see here i just snapped this line and i got a good three eighths of an inch crown that we're taking off this board so that's really gonna it's really an important step to straighten these So just miter folded beam one of four, as you saw in the time lapse, went pretty well. I'm using regular clear packing tape, heavy duty packing tape on this one. Something that I've found that works uh, well for me is to use Tight Bond 3 wood glue. On long beveled miters like this, Tight Bond 3 is much runnier. It's got a thinner viscosity, which will actually help the joint to come together tighter um, and it gives you a little bit more working time so whenever i'm doing beams i'm almost always using tight bond three it works really well so all taped up uh, flip it over here as i mentioned earlier in the video it's just handy if you can make the width and even say seven inches that way you can have a five and a half inch opening on the inside so for my blocking i was able to just go and take a one by six and cut some short blocks real quick and i use those to help keep everything square so i'll insert those 
pull it together tight and then use a piece of tape over the outside to pull it together while the glue dries. Just a quick closer look. Again, you can see these blocks, they're not glued or screwed or anything. They're just in there temporarily to help keep everything square and in place. See the tape going up around the outside. It's nice and stable. Flip this over, take a look at the miters. I did over glue it a little bit. You can see uh, this does kind of make a mess. Whenever you over glue it, you'll get some glue on the outside of the tape. Try to avoid that if possible. Um, so we'll adjust that on the next three because this Type Bond 3 can be a pain to sand off. Guys, one thing I do recommend doing at the time whenever you're gluing up is to take a round object and burnish your outside corner. And that just means applying some pressure to that outside corner. And what that is, that's gonna seal up that very outside point. It's gonna compress the glue inside of there. See where it's open a little bit? Burnishing it closes that up. It's fine to do it with the, right over the top of the tape. Um, but it's actually better to do it whenever the glue is still wet. I've found, especially with the Type Bond 3, it gets pretty hard. And if you don't burnish it and you try to wait until after the glue is dry, it's just too hard and it really doesn't work as well. So always make sure you do that. And whenever you pull that tape off, it'll be a, a perfect outside miter. Now, another thing I wanna talk about, uh, quite a few of you guys have told me I should try reinforced strapping tape versus the typical heavy duty pack shipping packaging tape that I've been using. So on this, I tried it for the first time and I gotta say I'm really impressed with this strapping tape. It's reinforced so it doesn't um, tear like the typical shipping tape would. The other thing I found as I was folding these up, a lot of times if your miter is not aligned perfectly, Whenever you go and fold it up with the heavy duty shipping tape, it'll actually break loose. And then I have to kind of reseal it. Um, with this strapping tape, that was not happening. It was so strong, even if something was off, it kind of just compressed the miter and stretched out all that much more. So I think uh, this is gonna be my new go-to tape. I'll have to kind of wait and see and try it a little bit more, but it's sticking a lot better and just working a lot better in general. The only thing I'm finding that I don't like with it is that with my gun, it's so much tougher. It does not tear with the blade nearly as well whenever I try to push it down and twist it. So that's kind of a bummer, but I'm sure I can get the hang of that. But uh, just wanted to kind of report on that. You can see on this beam over here, I actually used I actually used both types of tape. This here is strapping tape. You can see how it's reinforced. Another tip, whenever you do this, leave your tape long. That way you can just tear it off later. And you don't have to try and dig it off with your fingernails. And this is the regular clear tape. Both work well, but um, I think the strapping tape maybe works a little bit better. 
one of the other real key advantages I think it's important to mention with doing a miter fold versus like if I were to use my shaper and put a lock miter on these beams is I don't have any clamps out. So if you're working on a job site and you don't have access to a ton of clamps and a ton of tools, I could have easily made these beams on a job site with just my track saw and the tape. So this is a very lean method to make beams. As far as speed goes, I think I started this at about four o'clock and it's 5.30 now. So four beams in an hour and a half, I feel like that's a very good speed. Um, that's actually honestly quite a bit faster than I get whenever I'm doing a lock miter. Um, so really great method to build beams here. Another thing I wanna show, this was the first beam I put together and I over glued it. Look how much of that glue ended up coming through the tape and then this tape is not even stuck anymore. So I noticed with the packing tape, I obviously I was gluing less with this um, reinforced strapping tape, but I don't have any glue coming through. So that's another uh, big advantage I feel like with this strapping tape seem to really just seal off the miter a lot better. All right, I've got three beams all sanded, finished up. Everything's looking really nice. Thought I'd maybe let you guys see the uh, tape pull on the last one. Not too shabby. So after I pull off that tape, I will take a round object again and burnish this outside corner just to make sure we're closing up. Let's see here, I got a gap I gotta deal with. I, uh, I took this tape off a little bit earlier than I would have liked to, but it's Saturday night and it's about supper time, so I really wanna get these done and move on with life. Don't tell anyone, but I did put a couple pin nails right here. It was just a little bit loose, a little bit premature on pulling the tape off. After you burnish the corner with the round object, go ahead and use some sandpaper. And if you've got any w wet glue, that'll actually act kind of like its own wood filler. And then it'll really seal that outside corner up really nice. All right guys, all wrapped up. It is 6.20, time to go have supper on Saturday evening. So these are ready for installation. All the methods uh, here worked really well. The miter fold was strapping tape. And uh, you know, so let me know if you've got any questions. A uh, little bit more hands-on as far as the footage goes showing the actual process in this video. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, as always, uh, you can support by liking, subscribing, and um, check out my Amazon store. If you purchase products through the links in the video notes or via that store, that gives me a little bit of a kickback and uh, gives me something for my time. Do also have a Patreon page. Some of you do support on that and that's much appreciated also. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you've got any questions and we'll see you on the next video.